Howdy folks, Dave here at Thunder Mesa Studio on a Workbench Wednesday. Hope you're having a great day wherever and whenever you happen to be watching this. It's kind of a cold, wet, rainy day here in Jerome. Got up here, didn't feel really motivated to start any new projects today, so I thought I would do a little bit of maintenance. Kind of a good day for that. As you may know, I've been uh, refurbishing and reimagining the Thunder Mesa layout. And as part of that process, I'm uh, doing some cleaning and, uh, you know, revamping of old scenes as I go. And today I think I want to do some work on Geyser Gulch, which hasn't had any attention in quite some time. And it's starting to show its, its age a little bit, a little bit of wear and tear starting to show. So let's go over there and uh, take a look. When you have a lot of big modeling projects like this, there's always something that needs attention, something that needs to be repaired or cleaned or maintained in some way. And I was looking at here at, uh, at Geyser Gulch the other day, noticing it was kind of looking a little dingy, a little yellow, in fact, uh, like uh, some of the color was kind of starting to shift towards the yellow side with age. And uh, I think I want to, uh, to fix that today. I'm gonna start by doing a good cleaning because, boy, is this dusty. First, I'll give it a once-over with the shop back. This whole scene was modeled with, uh, you know, layers of paper and foam board and uh, acrylic modeling paste and acrylic paint. And then the, the shine of the water that you see there is actually a two-part epoxy resin poured over the top. And then some Mod Podge stippled on on top of that to give some, um, some surface ripples to the water. And it's, you can probably see it started to yellow a little bit. So I'm going to try to bring this back to a more uh, as-new, as-modeled appearance. Just getting this clean is going to help a lot, I think. Right now I've got a container with some just some clear water and a clean soft brush. Try and get the rest of this dust off. I'm not worried about hurting any of this surface um, with the water, even though it is you know modeled with you know paper mostly, because you know it's got those layers of resin on top of it. Yeah, that water coming off of there is, is just it's kind of brown now. <laughs> this uh, might have to do a couple of passes on this. And I'll just pat all this dry with a paper towel and uh, go over it again. The color of this water, by the way, this turquoise, is based on... Uh, a couple of real world places. One of them right here in the southwest, not very far away from where I am here in Jerome, up at the Grand Canyon. It's a place called uh, Havasupai. And the water looks very much like this. It's loaded with uh, travertine dissolved in the water. Another place uh, that uh, this scene is heavily based on is uh, Mammoth Hot Springs which is up in Yellowstone National Park. Now I want to do something about this yellowing. I'm going to dry brush some white and some unbleached titanium on here in different areas. It is supposed to be sort of yellow. I mean, that was intentional. When the travertine dries out, it tends to get kind of that, you know, chalky, khaki kind of look to it. But it's gotten a little bit more yellow than I want it to be. So we're going to bring it back. I just squeeze those colors out into a, a dish like this, dip my brush in there, and dip my brush in each one so I get kind of halfway between the two. If you start in with just pure bright white, uh, it doesn't give you anywhere to go. You, you can't get any whiter than bright white, so I'm going to start with kind of a, a medium white, kind of an antique white. A piece of cardboard and get most of that paint off of the brush. And I'll start up here at the top. 
just dry brushing on, trying not to hit the pools, but just the, uh, the travertine ledges. If I do accidentally get it on the pools, I can just wipe it off real quick with a wet finger. Just trying to bring this all back up about a shade. Just it's gotten a little bit dark and dingy. And carry that over onto the rock surface because the travertine stains the red rock as well. I'm using a semi stiff brush with a long handle. This is actually an oil painting brush. So I can get down into these places that are kind of hard to reach. I don't want to forget these pools over here. Now I want to mix my paint with a little bit more white than I did before. It's still dry brushing. Use a smaller brush. Come back and uh, highlight certain areas. The top of the geyser there needs to be almost pure white. gradually working my way up all the way to pure white adding a little bit more white in with each pass till I get to the brightest highlight which I want to put right on this right on the edges here I want to bring some of that mineral staining up onto the rocks too. Refresh that right where the water meets the edge of the rock. It's going to be white with travertine also. Now I want to give all that paint a chance to dry for a few minutes. And while I do, I'm going to punch up the look of rust on the rails here on the on the trestle using some of my pan pastels. First, I'll use the uh, dark red brown. Just hit the sides of the rails and the rail spikes. Make sure I get both sides of each rail. Now I'll come back with the brighter orange shade in just a few spots. Now the speed limit is five miles an hour on this trestle. So slow moving trains are going to drop a lot of soot and cinders and ash. So got some black chalk and right down the middle between the rails. And I'll put a very light spray of matte finish on there. Now I'll take one of my track cleaners, dipped in a little bit of mineral spirits, get all of the pastels and chalk and fixative off the top of those rails. My preferred track cleaner, by the way, this is a, a wine cork with a piece of uh, cotton t-shirt wrapped around it. Now that the paint and everything else is dry, uh, I want to come back and punch up the surface of the water. It's gotten kind of dull over time. You know, the paint yellows and the, the water surface just kind of gets dull. That Mod Podge will collect dust and get darker and duller over time. So. I want to bring that shine back, and for that I'm going to use some Woodland Scenics Realistic Water. Uh, I don't really like this stuff that much for modeling large bodies of water, ponds and streams and things like that, but for applications like this it's great, and I just like to apply it with a uh, small soft brush. Just pour some of it out in a clean dish. Brush it on every place I want it to be shiny. This stuff uh, smells an awful lot like uh, floor wax and I wouldn't be at all surprised if that's what it is. 
Now on these travertine pools, there are some places where the water will run down and it'll look wet and other places where it used to run down but doesn't anymore and it will look dry. So don't want to apply this to every square inch of this, just to the tops of the pools and the places where it's likely that the water would be slowly trickling down. Now I'll let that dry for a little while and we'll see how we did. While I'm at it, I think I'll do some service on the geyser unit also. This is the uh, vape pen <laughs> converted to a smoke machine for the geyser. It runs on uh, four AA batteries and I already changed those, just adding some fresh vape fluid. Nicotine free, flavorless. Let's see how old Unfaithful looks. Better than ever. I've got to say that that is a vast improvement. It was definitely worth taking the time to do. If I had any power running through the rails right now, I'd run a train through here too so we could see how that looks. If you're curious about uh, Geyser Gulch and how I got that geyser tour up, there is a video on that and you can check that out right up here. Um, and look for more small projects like this going forward with the Thunder Mesa layout as I move ahead with the redesign, refurbishment, reimagining of the layout. Going to be lots more little tweaks like this going on. I want to thank you for joining me for this Workbench Wednesday vlog. I hope you enjoyed it. If it's your first time here, you know, subscribe and hit that notification bell so you'll know when the next Thunder Mesa Studio video comes out. You can also follow us over on Instagram at thunder.mesa and see what's new on the Thunder Mesa Studio website at thundermesa.com. Studio. As always, a huge shout out and thank you to our Patreon members for helping to make these videos possible. Until next time, keep moving forward, my friends. Adios for now.